Well, it's 2022, and believe it or not, all of our problems are solved. The pandemic is over, and our democracy is saved. And we, I'm sorry, hold on, that, that doesn't sound right. Hey, see, I told you. Seth, I bet Brian 100 bucks that you'd read anything I put in the cards. Pay up, Brian. Thank you. Damn it, Wally! If you ever pull anything like that again, I'll give you a raise and buy you a car. What? Woohoo! Yes! I did it again. Can I just have the real cards now, Wally? Ahem. <laughs> COVID is more widespread than ever, and our democracy is on the brink. Yes, that is more like it. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The biggest mistakes we as human beings make is thinking next year will be better than last year, even though the best indicator of how things are going to go is how they've been going. It's not like Father Time pulls Baby New Year aside and says, go easy on him, kid, because I was a real ass ache. <laughs> Remember when 2020 ended and we all thought we were in the clear only to make it six days until the Capitol storm? <laughs> And if you thought that was crazy, we only made it two days into 2022 before the worst thing at a Jets game was somehow not Jets related. <laughs> and I have to say, this year's New Year's celebrations not inspire a lot of confidence that 2022 is gonna be a much more cheerful year. For example, at one point, they played John Lennon's Imagine, per tradition, while a smaller than usual crowd danced in giant hats branded with the Planet Fitness logo. Imagine no now, in fairness to those people, the Beatles were wearing those same hats in the Get Back documentary. <laughs> Who can forget that incredible moment when John turned to Paul and said, hey, Paul, wouldn't it be great if there was peace on Earth and a gym with no enrollment fees? <laughs> well, that would be super, John. And what if they gave you the first month free? Oh, <laughs> now you're giving me the giggly wigglies, John. <laughs> oh, you know what that siren means? New impression alert. I spent the holiday break at a special <laughs> two-week impression camp seminar where we learn how to do what's called a two-hander, where you impersonate two people at once. It's like they say at impression camp, do you want to be the life of the party or would you rather go to impression camp? <laughs> Point is, I didn't know him personally, but I'm fairly confident that is not what John Lennon wanted us to imagine when he wrote the song. <laughs> Otherwise, the lyrics would have been a little different. Imagine there's a planet <laughs> where you can exercise. <laughs> Everybody's into fitness. They're all beefy guys. <laughs> I feel like by doing that, it's like a favorite of Gal Gadot. And by the way, if that bizarre scene didn't give you a sense of how we're entering 2022, then how about this drunken rant from CNN New Year's Eve co-host Andy Cohen, who absolutely went off on former Mayor Bill de Blasio after the ball dropped. I don't know what Andy's specific complaint is, but it doesn't matter because this is pretty much how New Yorkers talk about every May, regardless of who they are or what they do. Let me tell you something. Oh, please, tell us something, Andy. Watching Mayor de Blasio <laughs> Don't go on a rant. Do his Don't go on a rant. victory lap dance <laughs> after four years of the, the crappiest you want to start term the new year. as the mayor of New York. The That's only thing the that year. Democrats and Republicans can That's agree how, on I mean, is what is a you... horrible mayor he how... has been. Wow. So sayonara, sucker. Wow. 2022, I mean... it's a new year. Because guess what? I have a feeling of which, I'm going to be standing right here which... next year. <laughs> and you know who I'm not going to be looking at? Dancing? As the city comes apart, <laughs> you! I mean, I think he's been spending too much time with those real housewives. Even Jennifer would be like, you should have a club soda. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Anderson Cooper is holding him back by the jacket the way you hold back your friend who was overserved at SantaCon. Look, forget it, Chase. Let's just go harass some outdoor diners. Given the choice between those two, I just want you to know, you want Andy to be the belligerent one because when Anderson Cooper wants to fight you, you're already dead. <laughs> and as for the rant itself, agree or disagree, but if you've ever been on the F train or in a bar at 3 a.m., you've probably heard that exact thing word for word. It's nothing personal. It's just a bargain you make as mayor of this city. In return for getting to live in a mansion, you serve as a sponge for everyone's rage. It's the only way we can live together in this city. We have to have a common enemy in the form of the mayor, whoever they are. 
Otherwise, we'd turn on each other in the streets, and you'd see Spider-Man and Buzz Lightyear just wailing on each other in Times Square while a cabbie runs over the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. <laughs> the same was true for Bloomberg and Rudy. It'll be true for Eric Adams as well. Angry rants against the mayor are such a standard part of New York life, they've been incorporated into the subway announcements. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. And remember, freaking de Blasio can kiss my ass. Oh! Next stop, 42nd Street. Yeah. So that kind of gives you a good sense of the state of things as we enter 2022. That's not to say there aren't reasons for optimism, or at least reasons for us all to be motivated to work together toward a better future. We can't give in to the fatalism, and we have to keep pushing forward together in solidarity for a more just and brighter world. But along the way, we're going to do some shots, and there are going to be times where we need Anderson Cooper to hold us back. <laughs> so just, you know, wear your puffiest coat, because it's easier for him to get a grip on it. <laughs> for example, that Andy Cohen New Year's energy is pretty much how I felt when Florida Senator Marco Rubio flippantly dismissed the most recent COVID surge, which is setting new records for daily case numbers and fueling rising hospital admissions on New Year's Eve Rubio tweeted, record numbers, testing positive for a sore throat isn't a crisis, and people in the hospital for car accidents testing positive isn't a surge. The real crisis is the irrational hysteria, which has people with no symptoms waiting hours for a test or missing work for 10 days. Irrational hysteria! Anderson, hold me back! <laughs> First of all, you haunted ventriloquist dummy, it's only a sore throat that's likely because you're boosted or at the very least double vaccinated, which would be a far better message for you to be pushing, especially since you got your shot before most Americans even had access to the vaccine. Do you remember that? Or did you block it out because you were, you know, being so hysterical? Also, do you think missing work for 10 days is the real crisis instead of letting people stay home to take care of themselves and slow the spread? That's pretty rich. Coming from a senator who once had one of the worst attendance records in Congress, and it's the true fact. One of the few true facts I learned from, of all people, Donald Trump, who brought it up in a GOP primary debate amid a chorus of boos. Yes. This guy has hey, the Trump. number one, Mr. The Mr. Trump, number may I ask absentee him, Mr. record Trump, in the United States. I'd like to ask States you a policy question. Doesn't you Your proposed... Just a reminder, the guy getting booed became president, and those were Republicans booing him. Also, you know it's bad when Donald Trump, of all people, slams you for not working enough. The guy spends most of his time wandering around his Palm Beach golf course like the <laughs> ghost of Haggard Vance. <laughs> By the way, that clip is a reminder, if you ever want dirt on any major Republican, you can just re-watch the 2016 debates. Trump went through those guys like Don Rickles at the Copacabana. <laughs> Rubio's attendance record was so bad, Trump didn't even have to lie about it. Trump lies about everything. Even stuff that's good for him. If he won the Nobel Prize, he'd tell everyone it was her best golfer, big penis category. <laughs> Can you imagine the conversation with his staff when Trump found out he didn't have to make something up? I'm gonna lie and say he doesn't show up to vote. Well, it's, it's not a lie, sir, it's true. Okay, well then I'm gonna lie and say his real name is Marcus Rubikowski. <laughs> well, what if, sir, and this is just a suggestion, what if you didn't lie at all this time? No can do. I have to lie once every five minutes or my brain explodes like the bus from Speed. Speed! <laughs> We love speed, don't we, folks? A young, a young Sandy Bullock in a breakthrough role, but I can't watch it anymore. I can't watch the film Speed anymore. It's very sad. It's very, I can't watch it anymore because it reminds me of the Access Hollywood bus, <laughs> where I was treated very, I was treated very unfairly, very unfairly on this. But do you guys remember that? You barely do, don't you? Like the whole thing was a dream. But it's true, it's one of the many true things that I did. And everybody forgave me and I became president. <laughs> but I hope this is a reminder that Republicans like Rubio pretend to be noble statesmen above the fray are arguably just as reckless and unhinged as the far-right weirdos like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has repeatedly lied about the vaccines who and recently called for a, quote, national divorce, which is, I guess, the sequel to National Velvet. How? <laughs> How would a national divorce even work? Who would get the White House? Who would pay alimony? Who would get custody of Eric? It would probably <laughs> just be the two sides pushing him back and forth. He's a Republican, so he should go with you. Uh, but he's a New Yorker, so he should go with you. <laughs> and then when critics said it sounded like she was calling for a civil war, Green defended the tweet by writing that divorces happen in court, or perhaps for a country, can happen in Congress. Happy marriages are the result of two committed people working together, resolving differences, and changing behavior that hurts the other. And by the way, this person who said happy marriages require two sides to compromise is also the same person 
who tweeted a truly depraved lie about Democrats and COVID last week when she said the vaccines are failing and the Democrats are tyrants. The entire effort should be focused on life-saving treatments and returning life to normal, wide open, no masks, no mandates, no discrimination, and life-saving treatments widely available. We all want to get back to normal. You're the ones who want to live with this endless cycle of misery and death and just let a highly contagious respiratory virus ravage the country. That's not normal. The rest of us just want to slow the spread of COVID and get back to something that's actually normal. You know how badly I'd love to go back to my old life of eating indoors at restaurants without a mask on so the waiters would recognize my face and comp my meal? <laughs> they always said the same thing. Oh my God, I loved you in the office. <laughs> hey, whatever. Free cheesecake is free cheesecake. <laughs> well, not surprisingly, after all that, Green's personal account finally got kicked off Twitter. Twitter is permanently suspending the personal account of Representative Marjorie Taylor Green. According to the social media company, it's because Green repeatedly posted false information about COVID-19. The Georgia Republican just releasing a statement bashing the social media site, writing, Twitter is an enemy to America and can't handle the truth. Oh, looks like you finally got that divorce you wanted. And regardless of how you feel about the ethics of kicking politicians off Twitter, it's just a huge quality of life improvement. Like when Trump got kicked off Twitter. Trying to live in a world where people like Trump and Green are constantly screaming insane on Twitter is like trying to have a conversation with a friend on the street next to a jackhammer. Wow, it's great to see you! I said it's great to see you. Man, this jackhammer, freaking de Blasio, am I right? What? Oh, yeah, I forgot! Friggin' Adams, am I right? People are so deeply invested in the unhinged idea that any attempt at all to curb the spread of COVID is somehow tyranny. For example, Congressman Madison Cawthorn tweeted over the weekend, our founding fathers wouldn't recognize the America we live in today. They would be horrified and rightly so. I mean, no one from the 1700s would recognize anything. I mean, Thomas Jefferson was a renowned inventor, but he'd still his pants if you showed him a Roomba. On the other hand, if you want to invoke the Founding Fathers, George Washington famously ordered his troops to get inoculated against smallpox. And if he refused, General Washington would famously say, Sayonara, sucker! <laughs> and yet, despite their obsession with prioritizing these treatments over vaccines, they can't even seem to get the names right, as Fox host Brian Kilmeade recently demonstrated. Aaron Rodgers is saying what we've been saying, you especially, Carl, yesterday. We're the therapeutics, the uh, mono, monocolonial, uh, uh, the, the treatment the therapy. Antibody, yeah. Yep, antibodies. Monochrome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> monoclonal, you know, the thing Mr. Peanut wears. <laughs> it's almost like they're monomaniacally monopolizing the monologue about monoclonal molecules. And that was today's joke for your SAT prep course. Study up, kids, or don't. It's your future. I don't care. Anyway, Brian, do you do any preparation at all before you go on TV, or do they just pull you out of bed, dump cold water on your face, and throw you in front of the camera like a hostage? Oh, God, where am I? Why are the lights so bright? Just read the card, Yankee. Monocolonial antibodies. 2022 is arriving with a fresh set of challenges, along with the ones we were already facing in the time is now to band together in solidarity and do something about them, whether it's saving democracy or keeping people healthy and safe from a highly contagious respiratory virus. We should be working together to solve these problems. We can do it. To quote the song, imagine all the people living life in peace. You! <laughs> this has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.